talking about the requirements in Islam about clothing. What are the specific things that differentiate the men from the women as far as their outward attire? Well, I'm assuming here that they've moved to America and are wearing civilian, what we'd call just ordinary clothes. So when you see a Muslim, the only way you might spot a Muslim if he's standing there is if he wears a beard and there's no mustache. Now that doesn't necessarily mean he's a Muslim, but it is what we call a halal beard. That is, there's one of the rules of the Muslim male is supposed to, amongst other things, shave his armpits, his pubic area, and the uh, mustache. So, you, But that's a subtle thing. And most Muslim men that I know, as I had many Muslim students, they just they look ordinary. They're just people. It's the woman who looks different. And that's with the hijab, the head covering, and or the rest of it. Of course, the most astounding one is the black uh, garb with the black niqab and that that's startling when you see it I've never grown used to looking at it because it's like as I've said earlier it's like a wall between me and the woman it must be incredibly uncomfortable especially in the heat I have t talked with women who've worn it and they just say it's almost and the worst thing is over your mouth it's like you're you're trying to suck in cool air and it doesn't work very well oh my gosh I mean, who would volunteer to wear one of those really so is, and is some of them, by the way, and some of them, by the way, are made of polyester. No breathing. No breathing. Got it. So halal, which is the lifestyle requirements, including diet. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit. What's different from, say, Orthodox Jews with kosher requirements? Ah, first off, let's state this. It turns out that Orthodox Jews food can be eaten by Muslims and it satisfies the halal requirement. But in general, halal, and we're only going to talk here about halal meat. Halal meat is, fa is done with an animal facing Mecca, and then the, there is no God but Allah, Muhammad is prophet, shh, their throat is cut. Now, the problem with this is, is they're left to bleed to death and they're still alive. And if you're doing this on a major scale, this means that the other animals can smell the blood and there's panic and adrenaline in the blood. So this is not good. But basically, it's in the process of killing. And then after that, oh, did I mention that only a Muslim can do this? So as, a, as the meat system becomes more and more Islamicized, becomes more and more halal, this means more and more ordinary butchers can't do the work. Wow. How about finances? Uh, Sharia finance is something interesting. I understand uh, <laughs> there can be no interest on loans. Um, traditional banks and finance in the United States is bypassed if you are following the rules. Can you explain that? Sharia finance is based on the idea that you don't pay you don't pay any interest on the principal. Now, you may not pay any interest, but you wind up paying other fees, which oddly enough turn out to be more than the interest rate would have been paid if you had an ordinary mor mortgage. So, there's a lot about Sharia finance I do not understand, but I do understand this about it, is that Sharia finance includes the paying the zakat. The zakat is a charity tax, and the charity tax includes paying for jihad. So Sharia finance helps to support jihad. Now, there are many forms of jihad here, not just the cutting off your head or running airplanes into a building. Thanks for joining us on American Truth Project. I want to thank our special guest today, Dr. Bill Warner. I urge all of you watching today to go to his website, Political Islam, and start ordering books. You've got your homework cut out for you. You need to know what he's talking about before it's too late. Remember, text from your cell phone the word TRUTH to 88202, 88202. You'll be signed up for our free text message service so you'll get this and all our videos for free on your cell phone every day or whenever we release them and we never charge for any of it. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.